Marcus. Do you want a lolly? I want my money back. <laughs> what? Your programme says there's a death-defying stunt. There is a death-defying stunt. Milo, the skydiver, dives 50 feet into a suitcase. And died. <laughs> oh, right. I see where you're going. The thing is, he didn't actually die. Yes, he injured himself quite badly, but we never said injury-defying. He might die. He almost certainly won't die. But if he does? He won't. It's a good hospital. They always patch him up, every time. <laughs> But if he does die... If he does die, I'll be certain to refund you your £8.50. That'll absolutely be the first thing I do, all right? <laughs> Fantastic show today, guys. And if everyone in that audience goes home and tells three friends, then next show we'll have... Nine people. All right, yeah! Come on, everybody! Boyko, amazing as always. When you did that double backflip on the high wire, the crowd just fell silent. All right, woo! <laughs> and remained silent throughout the entire clown act. Uncle Jeff? See, those people were philistines, Lizzie. Some of what we do is not what you'd call laugh-out-loud funny. It's much more subtle than that. They'll be laughing now, won't they, Geoffrey, in their cars, on the way home? <laughs> more subtle than that, love. Sometimes they won't laugh at all. It's that subtle. <laughs> right. Do you think you could make it slightly less subtle and maybe less disturbing? What do you mean, disturbing? Deep breaths, Geoffrey. I'm thinking about that bit with the balloon animals. I mean, most clowns make a little dog or a rabbit. You made a poisonous snake. <laughs> the thing is, Lizzie, rabbits are quite tricky to do. Snakes are that bit easier. Look. <laughs> And then you hypnotised the snake, and the snake attacked your face. Yeah. Yeah. Kids love that bit. But there were children crying. In fairness to Geoffrey, that boy was crying from the moment we came out. When Geoffrey put that bag over his head, if anything, he was quieter. <laughs> we all know the clowns are crap. The only reason she doesn't sack you is because you're family. Look, I'm not being funny. No, you're not being funny. That's the whole problem. <laughs> No, you're the one that should be sacked for playing the wrong music. We're supposed to come onto the music from Thunderbirds. Instead, you played the theme from Schindler's List. <laughs> the only reason she hasn't sacked you is that you're an old mate of her dad's. Look, I'd love to sack you both. That seems fair. <laughs> Can we just get on? Georgie, I thought you were terrific. There were some really great moments. Thank you, Lizzie. Although David wasn't happy, he asked for two bottles of mineral water and what you provided was top. Right, the thing is, Georgie, is Oh, that... don't apologise to me. I'm happy with anything. It's David who was upset. Right. <laughs> the thing is, David, is our budget won't stretch to mineral water. Not on these audiences. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Do you think David will be OK with that? Well, he won't let his performance suffer, if that's what you think. And you should know that Cirque du Soleil was on the phone to him twice this week. Really? Saying what? I don't know, Lizzie. He doesn't tell me everything. <laughs> Look, what I'm basically trying to say is the show is brilliant, but it needs a little bit more... pizzazz. Pizzazz? What kind of pizzazz? Thin and crispy. Margarita. It's a pun on pizzas. <laughs> right, I'm off to the hospital to see Milo. Any messages for him? Tell him he's a stupid, clumsy idiot who can't aim his head for a suitcase and... You're a much-loved performer and we all hope you get better really soon. <laughs> and here's a little teddy bear to say sorry for the accident. <laughs> Carry on like this, you'll be able to open your own shop. Obviously, we hope it doesn't go that far. Thank you. So, how are you feeling? Lousy. How's the leg? It is broken. I am sorry. Anyway, the evening show starts in two hours, so... What? We better be getting back. What are you saying to me? Your name's in the programme. Milo the Skydiver. People are expecting to see you. I have broken my leg. Leg. Singular. This one still works. How do you expect me to do my act? Oh, come on, it's hardly an act. You just fall off a platform. No way. What's this stuff? Morphine. Morphine. What does that do? It's a painkiller. Painkiller. Exactly, you big Jesse. Come on. <laughs> no, I refuse absolutely. Oh, fine. Have it your way. You win. Have a squirt of morphine on me. <laughs> You're a trooper, 
Upper Milo a troop of marbles! OK, so as some of you may have seen, Milo missed the suitcase again. <laughs> He's out for a month. Oh, oh, no. But what a crowd. I mean, we nearly sold out. All right, woo! I don't know how we did it. It's obvious. Kids love violence. The matinee crowd saw Milo break his leg and brought their mates to see more. And then he broke the other one. What a star. Yeah, but he's gone now. Who else is likely to die in the ring? Apart from Jeff, obviously. <laughs> I am your new skydiver. No, Boyko, not you. You're far too valuable. I can't afford to have you permanently damaged. Anyone else? <laughs> oh, come on, it's not difficult. There's no actual talent involved. In that case, Jeff. <laughs> no, no, Erasmus should do it. He's only five foot one, he'll be falling for longer. <laughs> Lizzie, I will be fine. St Julian will protect me. St Julian didn't protect Milo, did he? The St Johns were quite useful. <laughs> only because he landed on one. <laughs> Please, Lizzie, you know that the only goal of my existence is to make you happy. Yeah, and that's dead nice, but I can't risk it. You're my star act. Uh, 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 uh. When your dad was in charge, he said there were no stars in this circus. There are no stars in this circus. Too right. <laughs> then explain this. It's a blatant poster of Bonko juggling. His balls are bigger than my head. All right. <laughs> it wasn't like this when your father was in charge, Lizzie. Back then, we were a team. When the circus came to town, there was a parade. The tigers, the clowns, all marched together down the high street. Like the Nazis. Only ever so much friendlier. <laughs> Are you suggesting that we release a tiger onto Macclesfield High Street? No. I'm suggesting I go out there and clown in the town. Yeah, woo! Tiger will be less scary. And funnier. <laughs> I think it's a good idea, Geoffrey. You don't get enough fresh air. And it'd be a chance for you to make some friends. Yes, and it would be a promotion. It'd be like saying our circus has a hilarious clown act. Who could object to that? Advertising standards? <laughs> right, enough is enough. Come along, Helen. We're leaving. Leaving? What, for good? No, I'm just going back to the caravan. <laughs> So, no one wants to be the skydiver. We're going to have to find a new act. I know this modern dance troupe who used the actual framework of the tent. To... Not pole dancers, no. <laughs> Anyone else? I have it. I swallow two swords at the same time, but only one goes in the mouth. <laughs> Any suggestions? Bring them to me. There's a hundred quid bonus to whoever cracks it. Uh, when the two swords. Touch within me, we run electric current through them and light up the whole tent. <laughs> hey, Lizzie! <laughs> it's not fair. Eat your soup, Geoffrey. Carry that show. I carry that acrobat. I know you do, darling. Not literally. Literally, he carries me in the clown carrying routine. That is a very funny routine. I definitely heard someone laugh at that the other day. <laughs> and if Lizzie won't promote our show, well, we just have to do it ourselves. Look what I've done. You've eaten it all up. Well done. No, look at that. Look. I've made a flyer. <gasps> look at that. You're right up the front. And I've made the acrobat cross-eyed. <laughs> oh, you've made two. Uh -huh. I've made 300. Ooh. And I'm going to hand them out in town, just like the good old days. Oh, you will be careful in town, won't you, Geoffrey? Don't go fighting with people again. I won't. Remember how hard it was to do tumbles with that tag on your ankle? Yes. <laughs> Can I have the car keys, please, Helen? When you've eaten your pudding, Geoffrey. <laughs> Found your act. Really? Yeah. Martin, the human cannonball. Martin? Martin! <laughs> we can work on the name. But we've had human cannonballs before. It's been done. Not like Martin. He operates without a safety net, without a helmet, and we fire him directly into a solid brick wall, don't we, mate? <laughs> certainly sounds dangerous. Lethal. How many times have you done this? One-off performance, this first and last time. <laughs> what made you want to try this stunt? I just want it all to be over with. Look at that face, he can't wait. 
You're raring to go, aren't you, Martin? The sooner the better. <laughs> Martin, are you working at the moment? I lost my job five months ago. Married? My wife left last week. She'll be sorry. Can I buy 100 quid now? I am not firing a suicidal man into a brick wall. No! Oh, I'll do it. He's not suicidal, he's just quite laid back. I am suicidal. Shut up. You need professional counselling. Don't want counselling. Not you, him. Look, I'm trying to do you a favour here. Got any better ideas? He could be the skydiver. Is it lethal? If you're lucky. Well, I'm not. Your dad would have hired him. Oh, here we go. Mind you, your dad could do all the acts himself. He had skills. I've got skills. I just don't know what they are yet. You say that, but you won't try stripping even once. <laughs> I have your act. Get lost. I was here first. I've told you, Boyko, I'm not putting you at risk. No, no, no. Uh, this is safe for me, but dangerous for my assistant. <laughs> she is strapped to a board which rotates 20 feet above the ring. I bounce on trampoline, and with each backward somersault, I throw a knife whoosh, at the board. Seen it. Blindfold. Seen it. And the trampoline whoosh, is on fire. Wow. I have seen it done uh, only once. It was on television and was in... Um... A cartoon. Yes. <laughs> hey, but anything is possible if you have belief. And who's your assistant? Uh, it must be someone with whom I share a bond of absolute trust, a bond reaching beyond friendship to something much deeper. I think you know who I mean. <laughs> Volunteer from the audience? No. <laughs> Lizzie, you will be my sexy assistant. Me? Yeah, I know how desperate you are to find your talent. Hey, you cannot juggle, you cannot tumble, you cannot bounce, you cannot hula, you cannot... All right, you've made your point. Perhaps this is your skill. What, having knives thrown at my head? Yes, I cannot do this act without a partner. I'll do it. He'll do it. <laughs> but he is not sexy. Oh, thanks. That's just what I needed to hear right now. <laughs> it must be somebody as sexy as a hot, wet fox. Just think of something else, all right? Something that doesn't endanger anybody. Yeah, I understand. Come, Erasmus. We'll find something safer. I don't know why I even carry on. Tell me about it. <laughs> Come to the... Come to the seat. Show me. <laughs> Circus is now... Come to the... Come to the seat. I'm not going to bite you, am I? It's your problem. You've never seen a clown before. <laughs> Excuse me, this spot's mine. <laughs> I'm not a real statue. Yeah, I know. Don't flatter yourself. I'm the king of static mime. Listen, Chuckles, there's plenty of other streets around here. Bog off. Oh, yeah, get off your plinth and say that. <laughs> I'll move you by force if I have to. <laughs> oh, yeah, you and who's navy? Just me. You human statues don't frighten me. You're not as hard as you look. <laughs> All right, then. We'll ring the council, then, shall we? See which one of us has got a permit, eh? Oh, no, 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 no. You threaten me. I'm calling the police. Stay here, I'll take the ice tree. Oi! <laughs> help! I, I, I'm trapped in the phone box! Seriously, help me out. I, I, I need to get out. Convincing, isn't he? <laughs> Don't just stand there, you idiots! Mind you, I didn't think they were meant to talk. <laughs> For God's sake, this isn't an act! Admiral Lord Nelson has trapped me in <laughs> <laughs> uh. Lizzie, have you seen Geoffrey at all this afternoon? Nope. Oh, he's been gone for ages. I even rang the police, but when I described what he looked like, they just laughed and put the phone down. <laughs> well, he is in full clown costume and makeup. 
Gosh, I forgot to mention that part. <laughs> I'm sure it'd be fine, Auntie Helen. Yeah. I don't suppose you or he fancy doing the skydiving act, do you? No, thank you. We'll stick to what we're good at. Oh, being clowns. <laughs> Sorry. Are you all right, Lizzie? Not really. I've got 500 people coming over this afternoon to see a skydiving act and we haven't got one. Oh, yes, there is. Georgie, seriously? Can't disappoint our audience, can we? Oh, I'm so grateful. Y you might not even get injured. Oh, I won't get injured. David's volunteered. <laughs> what? He had a word with just now. Said he'd given the matter a lot of thought and he wants to go for it. Not for the money. Thought he'd accept that. You can see how keen he is. <laughs> Your dog is going to jump off a 50-foot platform. Well, he might actually need a small push. <laughs> <laughs> to overcome his nerves, he was telling me. Right, shall I call the animal rights protesters now? There's no need for sarcasm. I'll tell David you weren't interested. You do that. David also wants to ask about increasing our expenses. Tell him to put it in writing. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how Dad did 30 years of this and still be massively successful. Things have changed since those days. Like what? Well, you've taken over. <laughs> Do you know what I'd ask him if he walked in that door now? How did you get out of prison? <laughs> Actually, yes, that probably would be the first question. Lizzie, I'll tell you what your father would do in this situation. What? He'd get drunk, nick everybody's money and run off to another town. That's why he's in prison and you're not. Yeah, thanks, Auntie Helen. Yeah, so don't you worry about not measuring up to your father. OK. It doesn't matter that you haven't got any circus skills and that you're not very good at management <laughs> and that none of the acts respect you and we never make any money. Yeah, I get it. The place is a miserable failure. But it's your miserable failure, Lizzie. <laughs> You remember that, your miserable failure. Thanks. Thank you, Auntie Helen. Your miserable yes, failure. Yes, I get it. Tell me you've got something useful to say. I've got three hours to find a new act. Don't worry, I really have sorted it. Not pole dancers, no. <laughs> what would you say if I told you I have top illusionist Darren Brown standing outside this office? I'd say no, you haven't. And you'd be right. <laughs> I've something better. Chinese mentalist Chen. Amazing man. Had an incredible life. Do you remember Tiananmen Square? One man standing alone before a tank while the whole world watched? Yeah. He was driving the tank. <laughs> That's very interesting, but what's his act? Hypnotism. And how's, how's that um, death defying? He hypnotises each member of the audience individually. Yeah. And when they're all in a trance... Yeah. ..we pack up the tent and bugger off. <laughs> Three hours later, the punters wake up in an empty field. It's a great idea. You like my idea. I do not like your idea. <laughs> and I'm not tricking the audience out of their money. I've still got three hours to find a new act. No, you haven't. Show starts in ten minutes. No, it doesn't. It's 20 past seven. How is it 20 past seven? I told you it was good. <laughs> Congratulations, Erasmus. Now you've ruined any chance we had of a successful show. So, basically, you're going to have to go with Chen? No! Get out! Well, at least give me a hundred quid for finding a new act. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Why the hell did I just give him that money? You are good. <laughs> Please, my lord. We've got a brilliant lineup of family entertainment. When do they get here? Just go and start the music. Right. Good news, bad news. Bad news is no skydiver. Good news. <gasps> oh, he's here. <laughs> yes, free! Look, would you just stop the mind map for one minute and tell me where you've been? 
But this is why Boyko's on the posters. Because he's punctual and reliable and he's the only one here who volunteered to be the skydiver. Don't listen to her, David. I, I still want to be the skydiver. Tough. Right, guys, we're on. Thousand percent. Teacher's pet, aren't you, Bonko? Always have to be the star. I will do the death defying stunt, Lizzie. I will risk my life for you. Oh, yeah! All right! <laughs> for Lizzie, I would dive a thousand feet, even to certain death. Really? Yes, but what can I do? She is the boss. No, not true, my friend. In the circus, the audience is the boss. Sadly, our skydiver can't be with us tonight, but we've got lots of other exciting acts for you. We want the skydiver, don't we, kids? Yes! Well, we unfortunately, he can't be here. We want the skydiver! We want the skydiver! Jeff, shut we up! Want the skydiver! We want the skydiver! What's he doing? I think I understand. Jeff is doing me great favor. We want the skydiver! The Skydiver! <laughs> but first, we'll present the cream of crafts, our four-legged phenomenon, David, and his lovely trainer, Georgina! What the hell was all that about? You heard what they want. You can't let the kiddies down. Thank you, Jim. You are a wonderful friend to me. He's trying to kill you. Let's do this thing. Whoa, all right. Stop it! Stop punching the air! Erasmus, call Martin the suicidal cannonball and tell him the job's his. I've already phoned him and I'm afraid it's bad news. What? He's patched things up with his wife and he's got a job interview. <laughs> What's wrong with these people? There is no option, Lizzie. I must perform. No, I won't introduce you. It's OK, Bonko. I'll introduce you. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, with St Julian's help. I'm going... Ah, hey! So brave without him, are you? Give him back! No. Then I will perform without him. You will not. I am in charge and you will do as I say. The audience is in charge. They will have their skydiver. Then I'll do it. What? You heard. If anyone's going to die out there, it's going to be me. Lizzie, this is madness. Actually, now you come to mention it, I... <laughs> A divine, beautiful madness. At least you have found your skill. Go out there, do the dive. <laughs> the thing is... This is the moment you fulfill your destiny. Tonight, you become... A paraplegic. <laughs> A star. Thank you, Georgina and David. We haven't finished. Yes, you have. Right, who would like to skydiver right now? Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I give you... Bonko, the Skydiver! <laughs> 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 I thought we'd discuss this behaviour. I did not know Geoffrey had a dog yet. Nor did I. David will want words about this. I don't think this is an act. <laughs> Jeffrey, stop showing off. <laughs> Why is he on the ladder? He never goes up there. He's scared of heights. I'll stop him. No, leave him. But th there is no safety net. It is dangerous for him. Yes, it certainly is. <laughs> Did he mean to do that? Or to set fire to his head? I think no. Oh 
Oh my god, he's going up the trapeze! But he doesn't know how to! Help! Please, someone help me! I'm being serious! <laughs> hey, this is truly exceptional myself. I would never dare to do this routine. Look how his shoes are burning through the bars of the trapeze. And it makes it look so easy. Hey. He's gonna fall. He's gonna fall. Oh! Hey! Straight into Milo's suitcase. <laughs> You've got to call that genius. All right! Congratulations, everyone. That was the best show we've ever done. But I think you'll agree with me when I say there's only one hero out there tonight. Please give it up for the rock pilot. <laughs> I thought he was rubbish, David. <laughs> Don't forget the bad news. The clown is completely uninjured and won't miss a single show. Oh, come on. Be fair to Uncle Jeff. That was a very traumatic experience out there. It's bound to have knocked his confidence. Make way for the skydiver! <laughs> the star of the circus. You were very lucky out there. Lucky? What are you talking about? That was a well-practiced routine. Was it, Geoffrey? Of course it was. Me and that bloke, we were mates. It was all planned. I wasn't scared at all. Great. You can do the same thing next week, then. Unfortunately, uh, that bloke, my mate, um, he won't be available. He's uh, got his own act to concentrate on. Help! <laughs> Seriously, I'm trapped. A clown has trapped me in here. Please, is anybody there? Help! <laughs> Light up your Christmas with the BBC with more fantastic festive comedy. Go online to find out more. There's something for everyone. Well, next on BBC One, Helen's desperate to impress at Waterloo Road.